So I've been spy baiting for a couple years now. And in my travels all across the country, I've had the opportunity to spy bait on some very diverse fisheries all across the U.S. And in my travels, one thing I've learned is how diverse the spin bait actually is. I was very surprised on how well the spy baiting technique worked on grass lakes like my home lake, Lake Gunnersville. This winter, I've caught some of the biggest stringers of largemouth I've ever caught on Lake Gunnersville on the spin bait 80. I spend my summers up north in the Great Lakes region, and the one thing I've learned is that the spy bait technique is absolutely deadly on giant smallmouth. The spin bait 80 is the bait that kicked off the whole spy baiting craze. This past year at ICAST, Duo Realis introduced two new baits to add to the spy baiting lineup the Spinbait 80 G-Fix and the Spinbait 90. The differences between the original Spinbait 80 and the new G-Fix version, the G-Fix version is a little bit heavier, weighing in at 10.5 grams versus 9.5 grams. Also, the G-Fix has a balanced forward weight, which allows you to throw it a little bit further, it'll sink a little bit faster, and you can also throw it on bait casting gear. The newest bait in the lineup from Duo Realis is the Spinbait 90. The Spinbait 90 is 90 millimeters long, it weighs in at 15 grams, and it's designed to be thrown on heavier line and on bait casting gear. The type of rod I like to use is a seven to seven three medium to medium heavy rod, and I'm using 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon. And on this technique, again, it's gonna be a bait casting gear. I like to use a five to one ratio to be able to slow down the bait. This bait excels in deeper water, it falls faster, uh, you can cover a lot more water with it, and you can fish it around heavy cover. When fishing the spin bait 80, I like to throw it on spinning gear. Uh, the type of rod I like to use is a seven foot to seven and a half foot medium action with a fast tip. Uh, this longer rod will allow you to throw the bait a little bit further in clear water situations, and the fast tip will actually help with line breakage since you're using such light line with this technique. As far as line goes, you wanna be using four to eight pound fluorocarbon. A lot of guys like using straight fluorocarbon, but myself, I like to use a braid fluorocarbon leader. When selecting color of the spin bait, you want to base it upon whatever forage you have in your lake. Uh, lakes up north have a lot of perch, so you want to pick a perch color. Down south on Gunnersville, there's a lot of thread finished shad, so you want to pick a shad color bait. And then on uh, Lakes Lake Lanier, there's a bunch of blueback herring, so you'll pick a bait that mimics blueback. So as far as retrieve goes, you want to make it a cast as long as possible to get it away from the boat. A lot of times you're fishing in clear water, so that long cast helps. Now when the bait falls, you want to let it fall on a semi-slack line. Uh, you want to maintain contact with the bait because a lot of the bites will actually happen as that bait is shimmying down in the water. So pay attention at the very end of a long cast, uh, that magical shimmy is one of the keys to this bait and you'll get a lot of bites at the very end of that cast. Once the bait has descended to the lake bottom or where I feel the strike zone is, I'll begin to retrieve. And the key to the retrieve is to reel this bait extremely slowly and not overwork the bait. The spin bait has been engineered to create a turbulence when tracking through the water that will entice strikes from inactive bass. As far as the bite goes, there's two distinct type of bites that usually happen with spy baiting. The first is when a fish is tracking from behind the bait and following and honing in on that turbulence caused by the prop. When that happens, the fish will just come from behind and overtake the bait. Sometimes you'll just lose contact with the bait and that's a good time to set the hook there too. That second type of bite is that familiar tick, like you would feel on a Texas rig worm or even a swim bait. And a lot of times those fish, especially when they're inactive, they'll hit the bait a number of times. And one of the key things is when you're spy baiting, you wanna continue that slow, steady retrieve. Sometimes the fish will get it on the second, third, or fourth tick. The key is to continue that retrieve, let the fish overtake the bait, and when you feel the rod load up, set the hook. Talon Media Production. Brought to you by Psycho Bass Monkey.